19 victories, including 18 wins by knockout and only one defeat. He's from the Democratic People's Republic of Congo, but lives and trains out of Johannesburg, South Africa. He's the WBC Silver Cruiserweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alunga Junior. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue and white, official weight, 14 stone, three pounds, one ounce. In 29 fights, he has 26 victories, including 16 wins by knockout, only two defeats with one draw, and he's undefeated as a cruiserweight. He's the former Commonwealth and British light heavyweight champion, former WBC silver light heavyweight champion, and the reigning European cruiserweight champion. He is the cruiserweight fighting pride of Liverpool, England, Tony. Okay guys, you've had your instructions. Remember, obey my commands at all time, defend yourselves at all time. God bless touch gloves, let's do it. Touch them. World Championship Boxing came to Goodison Park, but that was in the movies. This is real life. And this is the test of Tony Bellew's entire career. Some final words from his trainer, Dave Coldwell. What a terrific partnership they've been. Can Coldwell guide him to a world cruiserweight title? Will Ilunga Makabu shatter the hopes and dreams of the blue half of this city and everybody in this stadium? 12 rounds for the vacant WBC cruiserweight title. Makabu, traditionally a slow starter. Just listen to this atmosphere. But as you said before, Jim, when that bell goes, everything just leaves a boxer's brain except the focus on the opponent. These two fully switched on now. Bellew, as you can see, significantly taller. Can he make that count in his favour? Makabu boxing out of that southpaw stance. Taking it easy, looking to set his traps. He's very heavy-handed, he likes to counter. bellew has got to be very careful, very patient, says Dave Coldwell. You take one risk with this fella. If it backfires, it could be good night. Well, he's trying to take the initiative early, Bellew, which is a good sign. But uh... So how good is it manoeuvring opponents? This is good from, from Bellew, you know, he's concentrating, he, he, He's thinking what he's doing, but he's using the right hand early. Everybody believes the right hand is the answer against the south I think the left hook is the one, but whatever works. Well, that's something Dave Coldwell said. Part of the game plan is they've got to stay busy with that left hand. Not necessarily offensively, but just defensively. Use it as a range finder, use it to block. Always keep busy with that left hand. That's the mantra that's just been drummed into value throughout the training camp. That left hand has got to work and it's got to do the job. Makabu just raiding a little bit here. Value looking to land the right hand. Yeah, I think the fact that Bell is trying to use the right hand this early in the fight is a good sign. Yeah, he's got the physical advantages and he's using them. Makabu going into a little bit of a shell, trying to draw him close. Yep, yeah, I like the attitude of Bill Yu, he's thinking what he's doing here. And Makabu against the ropes then comes out again. But you'll see this with Makabu on tape, but these are nice, solid, hurtful punches that are coming in from Bell Yu. And Makabu is shipping a lot of punishment here. 
hooks to the body, right hands upstairs. Bellew's got to keep his head though. He's dangerous like that! The left hand spun him over right on the bell. I want to look at his eyes here and that. I don't think there was a damage in shot. The fact that he didn't crumple to the floor, he tumbled over. But that gives us scores a big round to Macabre. That is exactly what Dave Colwell was saying. You can't fall into this fella's traps, he will set them. I think Macabu was quite happy to let Tony wheel away at him when he was in the corner there because he was close enough and he was offering an opportunity. Look how quick that left hand was. Tony got up straight away, looked to the corner, so he's not badly stunned. And the fact that he was bowled over almost on a somersault suggests that it caught him square-footed. It wasn't a punishing shot. If his legs had gone and he'd crumbled to the floor, then we're worrying. But look at that, that's, a, that's getting caught square-footed, losing your concentration, but not a punishing uh, punch that he has to discover and get to recover from. Yeah, he got up and he was annoyed with himself. But that undid all that good work. But Bellew's got to learn from that. He's had a bit of damage around the nose of Bellew as well. A bit of blood there, not quite sure. Keep an eye on that. Round two then, a dramatic opening session. Bellew doing a lot of good work. Makabu coming up with a left hand on the bell, and yeah, that nose is bleeding. He looks to have a punch of patience, doesn't he? He knows he's not in any hurry. 12 rounds is a long time. Other chances are going to present themselves. And the South Post stance is just another awkwardness that Bellew could be doing without, I'm sure. Maybe not all that easy to catch uh, as we thought. Uh, and he looked at uh, as, as during the introductions, he was skipping about and his feet. He looks pretty mobile as well, Macabu. I expected him to be a bit more flat footed being the puncher, but this is a tough job for Big Tony. And he is very happy just to settle back like this, as we've seen. He sets traps. Bellews walked into one, got away with it, albeit with some damage to the nose. Got to get to work in this round, uh, Bellew. You know, he's got, he's, he's got the jab, he's got an excellent jab. But, I mean, that's a, that, that was a shake of been knocked. The, the last thing you want is disaster in the opening round, and that's what he got. But he's very circumspect, obviously, throughout the, the second round here. And so much for Macabu being the slow starter. Which he has been in some of his recent fights. Took ages to get going when he won his eliminator against Makunu. Now he's bleeding from the nose as well, Makabu. Uh, Makabu definitely got caught with something. Yeah, they're both showing each other an awful lot of respect in this round. No one really putting their stamp on this round, are they? And Bellew, quite rightly, reluctant to get drawn into anything. He won't get greedy again, to use Coldwell's words. That was what he said to him when he went back to the ring. The corner there, Coldwell, he said, you got greedy. He knows it. Solid shots that have landed have come from Bellew. Now he's just got to back off and regroup. More blood coming from the nose. That was a good little burst there from Bellew. In a round that's been as quiet as this, that might just edge it in his favour. Yep, just keeps his concentration. While we were away, David Coldwell said, don't think about entertaining this crowd, think about winning the fight. That is spot-on advice. Well, someone is going to have to show just a little bit more adventure than we saw in the second round. There was so much at stake and the fact that Bill Hughes already been on the floor. So you, you, you can't uh, blame him for being a little bit careful in there. Looking to stay busy with that left hand. Whether it's throwing out the jabs, whether it's blocking, whether it's hooking. 
He's got to stay active with that. Nice little right to the body there. Makabu very much on the front foot. Bellew does land the hook. Makabu backing up and getting out of trouble. Bellew's got to stay patient here, though. He's been here before. But Makabu blocking, covering. If he's leaning back, he's not going to get taller in his shots, but he's heavy handy. That was a good left hook he got home with. The good work from Bellew, he's taken too many chances he's now. He's got to be careful. Solid oh, shots, but Ricardo looks like he's in serious trouble now. Is this it? The legs are buckled. Bellew's going for it. Bellew flat out here. What Ricardo got, he's in trouble. He stopped. And it's some distress. Bellew doesn't know it. His team doesn't know it. Now they've realised. Because Macabre right in front of us is flat out sprawled on this ring. On the floor, but he, he looks alert, uh, thankfully. But those were huge punches that he was forced to take there. What a terrific performance from Tony Bellew. It really was. He's used to knocking other people out, he's not used to being under pressure, and this is and this, is, this is the nice part of boxing, isn't it? I mean, this is what people do not understand about this crazy business. It's a sport. Look at that. It is as much mentally shattered as physically. Let's have another look at it again. Well, Tony was throwing meaningful punches. That, that one, that is the punch he probably felt that was getting on the result. He knew it was clean. It forced Macabre onto the defensive again. His body weight is back, so he's not going to get power into his own punches. Terrific shots from Tony. I was worried at the time that maybe he was taking too many chances, but uh, not completely the opposite was true. A good left hook. Just knocked the Maccabi onto the defensive a come a little bit high, but it's troubled him. And from that point on, Maccabi really couldn't get any purchase on anything that he was trying to do. His legs, his balance gone, pushed back against the ropes, body weight behind him. And Tony just so cool, looking looking for the spot. I mean, natural punchers, when they see a chance, they go for it. Tony saw his chance and he went for it. Oh, terrific shots. Yeah, really, really impressive. We were hoping to hear from Carl, it was all over so quickly, but yeah, let's bring you in now, Carl. Your assessment of Tony Bellio and that performance. When he caught McCarthy with a great shot, he fell over to the left hook and then he jumped on him. And I like to see fighters.